when your gears are working their best. They're virtually silent, actually. Now, this is typically because they're gonna be well set up, they're gonna be clean, and of course, lubricated. Now, these things added together means you're gonna have something that's very silent, and of course, that means low friction. No noise means it's running smoothly and efficiently. Now, funnily enough, this is how your transmission is at the start of a ride. My bike tends to look like this quite a lot at this time of year. I mean, it's the mud and muck, it goes with the turf of mountain biking. And although there are loads of factors that do slow you down when you're riding in softer conditions, the sheer noise that comes from a dirty transmission has always made me wonder, are you actually losing efficiency with a dirty drivetrain? Let's find out, shall we? Having ridden just about every type of derailleur-based system available on the market, I've always been really quite staggered by how well they actually continue to work given the elements they're against. But even then, surely the efficiency is going to be compromised by mud, right? I actually pitched that question to Shimano, but they threw it straight back at me and said, why don't you go and find out? So that's what we're going to do today. But we're going to start at the beginning with a nice clean bike. Now note how quiet my chain is at the moment. It's really quite impressive considering that I've got 12 gears and I'm in the lowest gear. So if you look close up, you'll see the chain is stretched across by quite a way from a completely straight chain line. Now that's because it's a dynamic chain engagement plus system on here. So this is Shimano's Hyperglide Plus chain. Now, looking at the chain, it is very skinny, but it's not just the fact it's a skinny chain that's enabling it to be so quiet. It is absolutely loaded with features. Features that enable the chain to really hook up onto the next sprocket as you're pedaling, no matter what the conditions are doing. But also, the chain profile itself, the leading edges on the chain actually have chamfered edges on them. And of course, as we know, when your chain is making noise, it's making friction, so it reduces that friction. It's unbelievable how quiet these things are. Now the chain line on your bike is something that's really crucial to the efficiency of your drivetrain. And you may well have heard of uh, chain line being referenced quite a lot. Now, if you've bought a bike in recent years, chances are off the shelf it's gonna have a good chain line because of the way it's been designed. But here's how you can tell. Now, if your bike has a one by system on here, which many bikes do today, all you wanna do is put your bike in the nearest to middle gear on the rear, and then look at the chain directly towards the chain set at the front of the bike or the, the crank arms with that chain ring there. What you're looking for is the chain to be as straight as possible. In an ideal situation, this means the chain has the least amount of stress on it and it's the best chain line because that way, it's not gonna to have to stretch too far to get into the lower gears or into the smaller, higher gears there. Now, cast yourself back to when chains were running on a triple chain set in the front and anything from five gears at the rear, the chains themselves were massively lacking in technology. And as a result, they just weren't flexible enough to give you the full range of gears, which is why you had to make the most of having the three chain rings on the front to try and get the optimum gears. What we have today with 12 speed, 11 speed, even 10 speed is phenomenal in what it offers you. Now, something to say though about a one by system on a bike, as good as they are, when they're absolutely covered in mud, just like any other transmission, you will have some compromises. It's just a nature of riding in an off-road environment. Now, for example, when your chain is absolutely caked in mud, you might find in the lowest gear, for example, it makes more noise than it would do when it's clean. It's gonna happen, but what that means is there is more friction going on there. It's inevitable, and hopefully we're gonna see that a bit later in the video. Now, let's have a look at dirty transmission. And I actually can't believe what I'm about to say, but we're in the middle of British winter here, well, a couple of months in, and the trails are pretty dry. All right, so I've got some mud on me, but it's not like proper muddy. So I'm gonna have to get a bit creative here. So I'm just literally gonna make some mud. We're gonna slop this all over the transmission and then we're gonna get riding and see just how it feels. Let's go for a ride now and then let's just see in this completely unscientific experiment 
how it feels. Now you probably can't hear it from where you are, but from where I am, I can almost feel the grit going around. There's definitely additional friction there, but I've got to say, the gears just keep on working. It's still surprisingly good. So it's kind of hard to quantify, but the fact is, if there's noise from your transmission, it's costing you in terms of efficiency. That could be down to poor adjustment. It could be to dry conditions in the summer, or you guessed it, when you've got mud, sand, grit, and all that sort of stuff that I have on my bike. Whatever way you do it, you need to keep your transmission as silent as possible. Now I have to say there is definitely some sort of additional friction going on just with the amount of mud and stuff going on, but it's really hard to kind of quantify what that is because let's face it, I've got soft tires because I'm running in muddy conditions. The ground is soft. There's a whole number of things. So trying to pinpoint that specific thing can be quite hard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my chain off this bike and also the XCR chain that I've got on my Canyon Lux, which to be fair is in worse condition than this one. I'm going to send them both down to the men in black. Yeah, the men in black are the people in the laboratory down at Muckoff, and they basically test chain efficiency for a living. Now they do it to test lubricants, but I'm actually asking them to use their machines to test what the difference is between a dirty and a clean chain. And hopefully using their machines, we're going to see some sort of numbers that reflect what I've kind of referenced so far. Okay, so I have sent two of my chains here. This is Muckoff's testing facility uh, for testing drivetrains, essentially. And now they will use this for testing the wear on chains and the effect of lubricants. But today we're not gonna be literally testing out. I'm just commandeering their machines, essentially, to understand what happens with drivetrain efficiency with, let's just say, a dirty chain and a clean chain. So we can just understand what is actually going on with your transmission. Uh, as you can see behind me, there's a whole host of different machines. So let's come and have a little look at these first. I'll even show you my chains so you can see the state of them. So these are the chains that they've been testing for us. And I think we're actually going to get these on some of the machines. Uh, as you see, there's a crew of people here that have got literally, well, not men in white coats, men in black coats in this case. Uh, and they've got all these crazy contraptions. So let's find out a little bit about what they do and how this can help us understand uh, what drivetrain efficiency actually means. Okay, so Lewis, uh, we've got my chains here that have hopefully been run through some of these machines, but can you just explain to me what they actually do and uh, how we're going to understand the difference between like a dirty chain, clean chain. Yeah. That's really what I want to get to. Okay, to uh, cool. figure it out, basically. So we have two, two dynos. Um, this one is mainly used as uh, running chains in and stuff. So we put the, the new stock chains or we use this as well for long, long periods of tests at sort of 10 to 12 hours sometimes to, to measure the efficiency of the, the chain loop. Uh, the main work we're going to be doing today with your chains is over on the, the measurement dyno. Uh, so we can record down to five seconds, but the main testing we do on that is 25 second intervals of a, a measurement to see where we are. And we can all graph that up. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get lost in the information here. So why don't we have a look at this setup and it's possible to get the chains running so we can yeah, yeah. see what's going on. All right, so I can kind of see what the machine's doing, but what makes you pick, other than the obvious chain line, is there a reason you pick this gearing on here? And what size of chain ring is that on the front? So at the moment, we've got a 34 setup on the front and we're running on the 16. So we tried to sort of figure out from my own experience and the guys up in the office of where people tend to ride out on the trail on a, on a mountain bike, which is, I would say, mainly between 16 and 18 tooth on the back. Yeah. Um, so we've just gone with that ratio. We always test in a, a dead straight line because we're just measuring the efficiency of the, the either the lube or we're doing measurements of dirty versus clean. So we always go dead straight line because we're not measuring chain losses over cross chain. Got to see you're taking anything else out of the equation it, basically yeah. by doing that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I sent two chains down here. I sent my XT chain that was on my nuke proof reactor and the XTR chain that was on my Canyon Lux. Uh, that one is the XTR chain. Deliberately, I've just been using wet lube on this and just not really cleaned it for a while, just trying to represent what most people actually probably do, let's face it. So hopefully we're gonna see some results here and see well, exactly what's going on. Now, as far as I know, it takes about 15 minutes yeah, just to keep rolling. Yeah, we're gonna do a 15 minute test uh, to start with. 
and then we'll get those results, we'll clean it up and see where we go from. Yeah, okay, well, let's, let's get it rolling and see, see what's going on. Stop machine, so our data's all been recorded on, okay. onto the computer. We can look at that in a minute. We'll take that off and give it a good clean. And then we go again. And we go one. again. Awesome. Now we've airlined it off. Luckily, we've got the luxury of an oven, so we're just going to pop it in there just to make sure there's no moisture left in there. If you haven't got chains all dry in the oven, we're just going to get our lube stick out. This has seen loads of chains from Olympic track, you name it. This has been lubed on this plank of wood. So we're just going to lube this up. We're going to put a bit of wet lube because the weather's not too great at the moment. It's wet and dirty out on the trails. We're just going to lube every single link. Uh, Every roller has been lubed now. They're just going to let it roll around and then we're going to put it on a dyno and get that next 15 minute test. Hopefully we have some good results. Okay, so we've actually got the numbers from the testing here. So uh, can you tell me the differences and what's actually going on here with the clean and dirty and both the XT and the XTR chains here? Yeah, what's interesting in this one is that you're, you are getting a, a different level of performance gain from the chain, uh, depending on which, which one it is, whether it's the XT or the XTR. So with, with the XTR, you know, the, obviously the more uh, premium one that it benefits more from a deeper clean that gets it down to like between 13 and 17 percent saving compared to when it was dirty. That's a reduction in in friction. Yeah, so so that that's a, a saving in chain losses. So that's how much the chain you're saving by cleaning your chain. Wow. Okay. Um, the, the difference with the XT is down to um, about 5.8 percent improvement. That's that's quite a big difference between the two then. So. So that suggests that the XT isn't quite as affected by being a bit crappy, really, yeah. with, with mud and stuff on it as the XTR is. I don't know what I was expecting, but that's that's quite an interesting result. It's really interesting because there, there is that much gap between the two, to be yeah. honest. So yeah, there is a difference. Yeah, but I mean, it kind of tallies in with XTR being a premium product that's designed for racing, that you would have to treat it appropriately yeah. for yeah. that, and XT can just get on it, and just... It's the same with all chain maintenance. The more put in, the more you get out. So, so something really important to say here is these two chains from my two bikes. The XTR was off my Canyon Lux, that's a cross-country bike, and the XT chain was off my Newt Proof. The Canyon, I do look after it a lot more just because of the nature of the bike. The Newt Proof, I ride that most of the time. They're probably similar age as well, so none of this is too scientific. We're just seeing what yeah. the differences are. Now, something I've got to observe, even though I'm trying to talk about efficiency in general here, is how well transmissions actually work uh, in this day and age compared to what they used to be. I've ridden everything from five speed up to 12 speed that we're on now. And even though the sort of the seven speed transmissions, you could ride them in filthy mud and it wouldn't really affect things as you're pedaling. They never shifted well in that. The chain would take a long time to hop up. We've got a Hyperglide Plus and all the newer features you have, all those shifting ramps and things. The shifting really considering uh, you know, in everything except the absolute foulest mud. It's pretty flipping impressive. They change gear so quickly. But it does lead me on to something, that if you're riding in really bad conditions, sometimes you're just gonna need to clean your chain of cassette whilst you're riding. Now you'll see cross-country racers doing this in the worst races, but if you're out for a long day's riding in the middle of winter, or actually in the middle of summer if you're out for a massive ride, it's well worth taking with you a small bottle of lubricant. You can get pretty small ones like this one here. Um, they're ideal just to keep in your bag just in case. Uh, and a cool little hack for you, if you get some takeout sushi, the little soy sauce pots, they are the perfect size just to refill with your lube from home. And it's just enough to keep you out of trouble until you get back and you get your chain and your, your full transmission a deep clean. 
but it really does make a difference trying to clean stuff off during your ride. And make sure you pay attention to the jockey and the guide wheels there because they harbour that mud. And actually to a point, if you ride consistently in poor winter conditions, they can stop working. They can actually clog up. And if that happens, the chain derails, the derailleur can get all hooked around and even break. There's a number of things that come. So just take care of your transmission. It's going to work better. And yes, it's going to be more efficient. Well, got me chained back from the Men in Black at Muckoff. And I've got to say, kind of surprised, but not too surprised. So I'm pleasantly surprised about XT, my favorite. I've said it before in videos, here's the workhorse. And the fact that yes, it is still more efficient when you run it clean and lubricated, but not massively so. So that proves the point that it is really good for a lot of riders. And XTR, well, it's a high performance item, so you've got to treat it accordingly. But wow, really efficient anyway, just seeing what can be done with it. But let's not forget the bigger picture because riding with a dirty transmission is a sure fired way to wear it out. It's gonna cost you more money and it's not gonna be as efficient. So do yourself a favor, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. You're gonna be riding faster, more efficiently, and it's gonna cost you less in replacing stuff. Don't forget to check your chain as well. It's really the key to getting the most out of your drivetrain. I'd uh, love to know what you think about drivetrains. Do you ride a filthy, dirty one? Do you look after it constantly? And how do you clean it? Do you clean it manually? Do you clean it using a chain bath? Uh, interested to know. Let us know in those comments underneath, and we'll see you in the next video. Ta-ra.